أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله لا إله إلا
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله بسم الله استوى حمكم الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين واذكر في الكتاب إبراهيم إنه كان صديقا نبيا إذ قال لأبيه يا أبت لم تعبد ما لا يسمع ولا يبصر ولا يغني عنك شيئا يا أبت إني قد جاءني من العلم ما لم يأتك فاتبعني أهدك صراطا سويا يا أبت لا تعبد الشيطان إن الشيطان كان للرحمن عصيا يا أبت إني أخاف أن يمسك عذاني فتكون للشيطان وليا إبراهيم لئن لم تنته لأرجمنك وهجرني مليا قال سلام عليك سأستغفر لك ربي إنه كان بي حفيا وأعتزلكم وما تدعون من دون الله وأدعو ربي عسى ألا أكون بدعاء ربي شقيا فلما اعتزلهم وما يعبدون من دون الله وهبنا له إسحاق ويعقوب وكلا جعلنا نبيا ووهبنا لهم من رحمتنا وجعلنا لهم لسان صدق عليا الله أكبر الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر, 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين واذكر في الكتاب موسى إنه كان مخلصا وكان رسولا نبيا وناديناه من جانب الطور الأيمن وقربناه نجيا ووهبنا له من رحمتنا أخاه هارون نبيا واذكر في الكتاب إسماعيل إنه كان صادق الوعد وكان رسولا نبيا وكان يأمر أهله بالصلاة والزكاة وكان عند ربه مرضيا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Assalamu alaikum. Hey guys, don't fight please. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We will start our homeschooling inshallah program uh, in five minutes. So I ask the sisters to join us here in this hall. Jazakumullah khair in five minutes. Yeah.
We will start inshallah in two minutes or less than two minutes inshallah. The sisters can come in, inshallah. We will start soon in uh, less than a minute, bithnillah. بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا اللهم علما اللهم أمين So the agenda for tonight إن شاء الله We will start with the right of the kids of the children on parents Sheikh is going to talk about this إن شاء الله And then uh, brother Khurram who had experience in, in, uh, in expertise in homeschooling ما شاء الله He's going to talk about homeschooling philosophy here in Canada and the guidance for uh, homeschooling, the boards, different boards. And I'm going to talk, inshallah, about the structure of the program we have here in, in uh, al Siddiq, the schedule, and some more information. And if you have questions, you can ask as well at, at the end. Uh, I don't know if uh, uh, Zoom is... They, they can uh, they can hear us yes okay so what should we do <laughs> the YouTube is good can someone try and open the YouTube okay uh, if the sisters can join okay Okay, so uh, can uh, can someone help can Muhammad, uh, help us in uh, uh, taking out the guys from the from the path and let the sisters come in? So we wait for this technical issue to be uh, resolved, inshallah, and then we start. Yeah, واحد بس يجرب اليوتيوب. شغال؟ جميل. Okay, so we will start with the Sheikh, inshallah, uh, the first uh, point here, the right of the children on the parents, uh, and uh, Ahmed is going to uh, translate. Do you need to translate, Sheikh, or do you want to speak in English? Yes, I want to translate. Online, okay, nice. So at the end, uh, Sister Tasha, who is uh, the uh, the board director uh, in Bloom, she's gonna join us. Inshallah, if you have other questions about Bloom, the, uh, there is a board called Bloom. So uh, she's the director. She's jo uh, she joined us, Inshallah, and for the questions at the end. Sheikh Nabda. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم 
وما توفيقي إلا بالله عليه توكلت وإليه أنيب ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أنا فقط عندي تذكير بما تعلمونه جميعا من حقوق الأولاد على الآباء في الإسلام الأولاد نعمة من الله عز وجل عظيمة جدا وهذه النعمة تستوجب الشكر والشكر هو صرف النعمة في عبادة أو طاعة المنعم هذه أول نقطة ومصداق هذا الكلام كثير في كتاب الله عز وجل وفي أحاديث الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم سمعنا في صلاة المغرب قول الله عز وجل عن سيدنا إبراهيم عليه السلام فلما اعتزلهم وما يعبدون من دون الله وهبنا له إسحاق ويعقوب إبراهيم عليه السلام لما ترك عبادة الأصنام وترك عباد الأصنام كافأه ربه عز وجل بأن وهب له ولدين صالحين وجعلهما نبيين وسيدنا إبراهيم عليه السلام دائما نموذج في عبادة الله عز وجل وتعبيد الناس لله لذلك ترك كل شيء ووضع أسرته في مكان غير ذي زرع معناها مكان لا ينبت مكان ليس فيه شيء لكنه رجى أن يقيم في هذا المكان الصلاة وأن يعبد الله ربنا إني أسكنت من ذليتي بواد غير ذي زرع عند بيتك المحرم ربنا ليقيموا الصلاة فاجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم وارزقهم من الثمرات لعلهم يشكرون والله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا يقول في سورة الرعد ولقد أرسلنا رسلا من قبلك فجعلنا لهم أزواجا وذرية أن الله سبحانه وتعالى امتن على أفضل الناس وهم الرسل بأن جعل لهم أزواجا وجعل لهم ذرية طيب هذه النعمة التي هي الأولاد هل هي فقط للمتعة لا الأولاد شيء ممتع وجميل جدا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا لكن مع هذه المتعة وهذا الجمال مسؤولية مسؤولية ضخمة جدا ولأنها صناعة الإنسان حقيقة الله سبحانه وتعالى يرزقنا أطفالا صلى الله عز وجل أن يديم النعم وأن يزيدها ويكلفنا سبحانه وتعالى بإصلاح هؤلاء الأطفال وجعلهم لبنات صالحة تستمر بعد الآباء والأمهات وهذا ليس شيئا سهلا والغالب بكل أسف أننا نتجه نحو الاستمتاع بالأولاد ونحو إمتاع الأولاد أكثر مما نتجه نحو إصلاح الأولاد والأسباب كثيرة منها الجهل بحقيقة المسؤولية التي هو الذي أريد أن نركز عليه الآن عن الأولاد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول فيما صح عنه كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته ثم يقول والرجل راع في أهله وهو مسؤول عنه أنه الإنسان الرجل إذا كان هو رب البيت وهو صاحب المسؤولية الكبيرة في البيت هو مسؤول عن من في البيت بما في ذلك الأولاد والله سبحانه وتعالى يقول في خواتم سورة التحريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون معناه يأمرنا الحق سبحانه وتعالى وهو الخالق والآمر أن نقي أنفسنا عن طريق تعلم ما يريده الله منا والعمل به وأن نقي أولادنا عن طريق تعليمهم وتوجيههم وتصحيح مسارهم أن نقيهم النار هذا خطاب مباشر من الله عز وجل طيب كيف نحن عندنا رسالة واضحة من الله عز وجل تبين كل شيء في وقته المناسب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وضح لنا هذا الطريق حتى لا يرتبس ولا يختلط كثير من الناس ينتبه لأولاده متأخرا لأنه يستمتع بهم يمتعهم يملؤون حياته وهذا حقه الطبيعي لكن ينسى ناحية تربيتهم التربية الصحيحة حتى يفوت الأوان لا يمكن أن تعد ولا أن تحصى الشكاوى من فساد الأولاد في كل مكان حقيقة لكن في هذه البلاد دائما متأخرة واحد يجيب أولاده أو واحدة يجيب أولادها بعد أن بلغوا خمسة عشرة سنة فتقول لك الشيخ والله ابني لا يصلي ابني ينكر وجود الله وأنا مسلم أو أنا مسلمة 
أنت تأخرتي هذه مشكلتك وليست مشكلة الولد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول مروا أولادكم بالصلاة وهم أبناء سبع سنين والأمر ليس معناه الأمر الجازم الذي ينفذ فقط ويدفع إليه الولد لا الأمر معناه التعليم معناه حين يبلغ الولد سبع سنين إذا كان متربي في بيت مسلم الطبيعي أنه صار يعرف ما هي الصلاة الآن نعلمه ما كان يرى هو كان يحاكي أباه وأمه البنت كانت تشوف أمها تصلي تصلي معها لكن ما تدري ما هذا الشيء في السابعة يجب علينا أن نقول لهم الصلاة تعني كذا الصلاة تعني الصلاة عددها كذا الذكر ينبغي أن يقع منه كذا الله عز وجل ينبغي أن نعرفه وأن نعبده يبدأ تبدأ هذه المعلومات تكون بالنسبة له معلومات بعد أن كانت مشاهدات مجردة طيب واضربوهم عليها وهم أبناء عشر سنين وفرقوا بينهم في المضاجع أنا لما يبلغ الولد عشر سنين وهو لا يصلي وهذا غير طبيعي لأن الولد ورقة بيضاء أنت زرعت فيه الصلاة وهو صغير جدا في السابعة علمته طبيعة الصلاة وما هي في العاشرة هو الآن صار جاهز لأن يصلي بنفسه إذا لم يصلي بنفسه في هذه السن ينبغي أن تعاقبه حتى يصلي طبعا تعاقبه في حدود الشرع الشرع لا يأمر بضرب الأولاد الضرب المبرح بل ينهى عنه والمؤدب سواء كان أبا أو غيره لا ينبغي أن يضرب ولده أكثر من ثلاثة أسواط للتأديب وليس للغضب وإهراء الغضب هذا كلام آخر لكن مراد أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خط خطا واضحا في هذا المجال نحن نتأخر لا نعلم الولد وهو صغير لا نأمره بالصلاة وهو ابن سبع سنين الصلاة على فكرة نموذج فقط لما ينبغي أن يكون عليه الولد المسلم نعلمه الأخلاق الكريمة نعلمه كل ما يتعلق بدينه نعلمه كيف يتطهر سواء كان ولدا أو بنتا نعلمه الصيام وما هي فكرة الصيام وما هي أحكام الصيام في هذا السن المبكر ابن الجوزي رحمه الله تعالى يقول كان السلف يعلمون أولادهم القرآن والحديث فينبت الإيمان في قلوبهم أو فيثبت الإيمان في قلوبهم معنى هذا الكلام عن سلفنا الصالح كانوا يعجلون على أولادهم إذا نشأ فيهم ناشي معناه إذا ولد لهم ولد يعلمونه كتاب الله وسنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كثير من الناس يقول أنا إلاش الأولاد يتعلمون القرآن هذا أحمق سؤال موجود في الحقيقة الأولاد يتعلمون القرآن لينبت في قلوبهم ويثمر في الوقت المناسب الأولاد مثل الأرض الآن إذا زرعت في هذه الأرض أنت لن ترى شيئا الآن لكن بعد فترة سوف تأكل من هذه الثمرة الولد أبو أربع سنين أو خمس سنين أو سبع سنين علمته كل شيء عن الله وعن القرآن قد لا يفقه شيئا وهذا طبيعي لن يفهم شيئا لكن هذه المعلومات تنبت في قلبه إيمانا سيظهر ويخرج حين يبلغ مبلغ الرجال ولا تتعب حينها الولد حين يتجاوز العاشرة والثاني عشرة والخامس عشر يصعب تأديبه يسهل تأديبه إذا كنت قد زرعت قد وضعت البذر في الوقت المناسب سوف تحصد في هذا الوقت لكن إذا لم تضع بذرا واستمررت في الاستمتاع وقررت بطرق التربية الحديثة وظننت أن لا فرق بين تعليم كتاب الله عز وجل وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم والنظريات التربية المعاصرة التي لا تسمن ولا تغني من جوع واعتمدت على أن الأهم هو راحة البلد الولد النفسية بعد سنوات قليلة سوف تجد نفسك أمام مشكلة كارثية كل ما كنت تبنيه تراه قد تهدم على رأسك وهذه هي الكارثة الحقيقية الله عز وجل يقول في أكثر من آية قل إن الخاسرين الذين خسروا أنفسهم وأهليهم يوم القيامة خسران معناه عدم الربح في الوقت الذي كنت تتوقع فيه ربحا هذا هو اللي يسمى الخسر خسران إنسان صاحب التجارة أو صاحب المشروع حين تأتي الفترة التي كان ينتظر فيها أن يربح إذا هو لم يربح يندم الشيء نفسه بالنسبة, بالنسبة للإنسان الذي شقي من أجل أولاده تعب من أجلهم لكنه لن يراهم ولن يروه في الحياة المستمرة الباقية التي هي الحياة الآخرة لذلك إخوتي أخواتي حرصنا على هذا الأمر الذي هو تعليم الأولاد والإشراف المباشر عليه وعدم تركه لأي إنسان آخر هذا مبعثه من إيماننا وعقيدتنا وما نعرفه من ديننا وما نوقن أننا سنواجهه في مصائرنا التي ستأتي لا محالة هذا هو هذه هي الفكرة التي ينبغي أن نجتمع عليها وأن نتعاون عليها وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان
بارك الله فيكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعليه وبارك وسلم عليه رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقوة من لساني يفقه قولي My dear brothers and sisters الحمد لله um, First of all I think it's a great honor for me to speak on behalf of the, uh, the management uh, May Allah reward them because they are providing us an opportunity They are basically word for the community, for our children, uh, and it is a great work. Wallahi, I'm telling you, the, the event that you are basically sitting and listening, it is one of the very important event in your life, actually. And that may decide maybe the future of your children. Okay, uh, before I start, let me ask a quick question. How many parents have children from grade one to grade five? Okay, okay. Uh, so I'll talk about the homeschooling. Uh, anybody heard about the homeschooling? Anybody has any idea um, before about homeschooling? Yes, I know you have it. Okay. It is, you know, something that many people, many parents, they're very afraid of because they haven't heard about this thing or this is something the parents think. Uh, they have to work with their the students and they have to uh, be in home and make sure they take care of all of their learning and sometimes whenever you hear this word like especially the parents and I was one of them before uh, homeschooling and it was like a, a shocking experience let me tell you before even I start the presentation it's not a shocking experience it is a very it is actually a very good blessing in this country from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I would say let me tell you the philosophy of the homeschooling the way homeschooling, the purpose of homeschooling that this country has developed throughout the entire North America, Canada and America, USA, the idea is that they, if you want to teach your children anything, what the public school system doesn't teach, that's where the homeschooling system is for. Okay, Let me tell you an example. For example, if you're a farmer and you want to teach your child, okay, I want to, he's in the grade seven, eight, I want to teach him farming, so uh, you can keep him at home you can uh, just uh, uh, fulfill some basic and some minimum requirements of whatever the grade he is in, if he's in grade seven, eight, or nine, or whatever grade he is in, and then you teach him farming. If you wanna teach him any of your culture, any of your language, uh, any of the things, for all of these purposes, the homeschooling system is basically is going to support you. So that's the ultimate philosophy is that if something is not taught in the public school system, the homeschool system is for you so that you can teach your children whatever you think is important for your child's life, and then you fulfill some ma uh, basic requirements. When I say basic requirements, what are those ones? So these are the four core subjects. Number one is the math, science, social, and LA. And they give you uh, a very light curriculum for each, for whichever grade your son is or daughter is going. And then uh, you just have to fulfill those minimum requirements and then you are able to uh, pass that grade and move into the next grade, okay? So that's the philosophy. Okay. Now, uh, in admin, uh, oh, is that one? Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, in Edmonton, we have few homeschooling systems. So uh, number one is the Argyle system. It is a system that is, um, uh, you can say a system or a board or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's by the Edmonton Public School Board, and they have one section that uh, people who wants to join the home, uh, do the homeschooling, uh, they basically register with the Argyle Online Learning. Okay. There's another one is Center for Learning. It's uh, from the Catholic School Board, and a lot of uh, a lot of a big population actually in Edmonton and around the w uh, probably North America they are actually registered with the Catholic uh, uh, homeschooling systems because they think that uh, the school system is not teaching or the school system is teaching something bad for their, for their children. 
which they don't want their children to learn. So they basically uh, uh, come for uh, center for learning. Okay, and keep in mind when I say Catholic school system, it's not that they are teaching your children uh, Christianity or anything. It's uh, if you if someone if some parents wants their children to learn Christianity, sure. If other parents don't want their uh, uh, children to learn anything uh, uh, of that religion, no problem. You just learn math, science, social, and LA, and that's it. Okay. There is another school system, um, virt uh, Vista Virtual, and that is also uh, one of the. Uh, it works on a sort of a more aggressive terms, uh, where okay, the children are at home, and the main goal of the parents are basically to make sure that they are basically exceeding the uh, even the public school requirements. So they are uh, much more aggressive uh, on their curriculum. And the finally in this list is the Bloom Homeschool Education. Probably one of the sister will be, inshallah, talking about that. But uh, the next slide I'm going to show you, please do not get afraid because it has a lot of information. I'm just gonna go over through it quickly. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so uh, just focus on to um, onto the certain points, inshallah. Um, now, each of these homeschool systems are basically almost offering these three uh, types of programs. The first one is a parent director. Okay, when I when I say parent director, means it's like the entire responsibility of the education parents takes the responsibility. Okay, and for example, so in this one, you choose the curriculum, you choose the books, you choose what you want to teach, and you tell the the school board this this is the, these are the things I want to teach. And once the school board agrees right in the first meeting, okay, these are the things you're gonna teach, and that's it. And then they you will basically uh, uh, complete the, uh, the year that way, okay? There is an, uh, the second option is, it's called a blended model. So for example, I can't teach my son math and science, but I can teach social and LA. Sure, so I'll teach those two subjects by myself, but for science and uh, maths, I need some support. So that's where this blended model works really good. They, so you get some partial support from the from the school and the rest of the things that you basically complete. So uh, this model is actually really good for people who are act in the uh, grade above from maybe four or five or six and above. This model uh, works actually really good. This model, the first one th that I talked about, the parent director, it's really good for grade one, two, or three kids, uh, it's excellent. I mean, you choose uh, everything, and uh, probably they, uh, the, this school will probably tell you, okay, uh, what curriculum, inshallah, they will teach, and that can make your life uh, a lot easier, okay? And then the third option, of course, we're not gonna take this option. It's like, your s uh, that's like teacher director. It's like your son is sitting in front of the computer the whole day like that as he is part of the class. So uh, that's another type of homeschooling system. Le let's go to the, the next one. Um, okay, uh, can you go back a little bit? Uh, okay, let me tell you uh, one other thing. In the parent-directed program, if your, ch if your child is registered in this program, you are going to get some funding back from the government. And that's approximately $850, okay? Depending on which school you go, uh, it's around that number, okay? If you go into the blended model or the teacher director, then you don't get any any funding. Okay. Yeah. So let's try that one more time. Yeah. Can you go one more slide? Okay. Um. And one more. Yeah. Okay. Um. This is the first school system that I mentioned. Okay. Uh. You guys will have the slides, but don't worry about. There's a lot of information over here. As I mentioned. This school is, uh, is supported by the Edmonton S Public School Board, and uh, it has all three uh, uh, types of the programs, okay? So you can just go ahead and register, and then they will basically tell you whichever program that you, you choose. I, uh, I think uh, we should, uh, from this school, we should basically t uh, um, tell the parents that the first program that we mentioned in the list, the parent-directed one, for grade one, two, and three, this is, is really good. If you wanna choose this particular school, you choose the parent-directed uh, program, and that would work uh, really good. And then the teacher will be here, will be able to help you out selecting the, uh, the course material and curriculum and, and all, those for, uh, as all those things. And maybe there are some other parents as well, they might be able to help us out uh, with our children, uh, what we need to uh, complete in our, uh, whichever grade we are in, okay? Uh, can you move to the next one? 
are we going there? Yeah, one more. Okay, uh, center, of center for Learning. Okay, uh, these slides are actually made, are basically, it's a summary of the all the information that is available on their website. So once you have these slides, you can go into detail. Again, as I told you, this is a Catholic school board, okay, and there, uh, it's, uh, I know uh, my, my kids are actually going in this school, and I know some other parents uh, uh, who have registered their children in this school. It's very good. Uh, it's excellent uh, uh, teaching, and also they are really, really flexible in some of the options. Um, uh, so whatever the type of flexibility that you need, uh, they, they are able to even provide. Uh, so for example, if you have uh, chosen a blended program, and uh, maybe uh, your son hasn't worked or your daughter hasn't worked for two months, uh, it's okay, they will they understand that, and then after two months, if you wanna complete the homework, uh, they're perfe perfectly fine with that. So they are really flexible, they basically work sort of according to your schedule, and they give you all the opportunities and resources, uh, and especially um, if you need some sort of libraries or if you need an access to specific resources and exam banks or and all those things, uh, this school actually provides that for you. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Yeah, next one. Yeah, one more. Uh, one more. Okay, uh, Vista Virtual is another school board, and uh, I wouldn't suggest maybe uh, for um, for the students who are over here, but it's it's also uh, available. But as I mentioned, uh, this school actually works on very uh, aggressive schedules. Okay, so they want to actually compete with their uh, with the public schools, and they want to make sure that the, the the children that come out uh, they are basically uh, exceeding even from the uh, from the public school system. So their schedule is very aggressive. Uh, they make sure that you finish the homeworks on according to the time, and uh, they engage the parents uh, quite a bit uh, uh, as well. So. Um, uh, this is a school system for those kind of parents. Uh, I, I know some parents actually they liked it, and uh, it's it's uh, it's good for them. Okay, uh, maybe Bloom Education uh, sister. I think sister Tasha she will be able to speak with. Uh, but I can tell you uh, one thing um, uh, before uh, I uh, close off. Uh, I I do gardening, um, and my mom does the gardening. I, I don't know anybody does the gardening. Hmm? Nobody. You try it. Okay. Uh, you know what is the what is the most difficult part in the gardening? This is my personal experience. I want to share. Huh? Weed. You know, I, I I the growing the stuff is actually probably maybe fifteen to twenty percent of the effort. Controlling all the negatives that basically affect to your plants is actually maybe eighty percent of the effort. You're protecting against the environment. You're protecting against the weeds. You're protecting against uh, all those things and making sure that the things grow. That is almost like 80% of your effort. And same thing happens with the, our other children. It's the time, I mean the community, this community is providing us an opportunity that we bring our children here with, alhamdulillah, with a very knowledge knowledgeable shiyu. And subhanAllah, I met him with, uh, with him, uh, uh, and his energy and passion is actually to, to deliver and to teach our, our young generation, our youth, so that they can, pr they can be protected. So. They are providing us an opportunity. We need to make sure that we avail it. All of us avail it. If our children are going, alhamdulillah, that's good. But if one of our children are not going, maybe our children are maybe bi uh, big or maybe are not there yet at this point, then we should support them in every cause. By, by the way, this setting up this program, I can tell you, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of effort, lots of work hours from the team, and, and not just the effort, uh, actually a lot of financial resources as well. So I would urge that take this opportunity at any cost. Make sure we 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 work with uh, with the with them, and make sure the opportunity that uh, Alhamdulillah our shuyukh are providing us. Uh, we we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to bless us and our children and protect their iman. For your presentation, it was nice. If you have questions, inshallah, at the end of this session, we will take your questions. Uh, do you want to take some questions now? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, for now, uh, general questions. You have something for Brother Forum? Can you come here, Ahmed? So.
So the question to the forum, so for me to have my kid in the school, I have to register first with one of these boards. Yeah. And you suggest that we go with the plume because it has all, uh, like most of the stuff that we need and it will help us in our program over here. Yeah. Inshallah. Uh, I haven't talked about it. Uh, it's because the sister Tasha will basically start explaining about that. Uh, it has a number of resources available. Um, it has, an, uh, we, you guys have an access to the Islamic Library, th which is uh, in the uh, EIA, Edmonton Islamic Academy, and also a number of other resources that are available. Um, uh, and this probably slide can actually uh, help us out uh, and show us. And maybe there are parents over here that can explain the, the actual experience. It's, it's a real, it's a wonderful opportunity. I think uh, if I want to say in one line, uh, which program that our children should register from grade one to three, it's uh, it's Bloom, their parent director program. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll 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 go. Okay. So let's say if I uh, divide all of that process in a number of steps. So the first step is basically you register. Okay. Uh, your child is registered. You get the confirmation from the school, uh, he or she is registered, alhamdulillah, that's good. Now the second step is, and this is, uh, uh, this is a step where most of the parents actually get scared and freaked out. Uh, it's, it's not uh, a very tough uh, sort of uh, step. It's the actually you have to choose the curriculum and uh, you have to basically submit the curriculum to the school, okay? So the school will assign a t uh, maybe a, uh, a teacher or something uh, and then uh, he or she will be working with you, and then you basically choose a curriculum. You will basically decide uh, how do you teach your son mathematics of grade three? How do you teach your son uh, LA? And then you have to write it down, okay? And they will. Uh, there are a number of sort of a templates available as well that you can pick and choose, and 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 you decide. And also that's where this this community, the, this school will also be able to help you out, okay? So they might have some maybe uh, some sessions here and for the parents and then they will basically say, okay, your, your son or daughter is in grade three or two or one, that this is how you should basically submit to the, uh, the plan to the. So once this big step is completed, now uh, you will be working uh, with your son uh, or daughter uh, or the school is working with your son or daughter and then there will be two meetings in the, in the 10 month period. And the whole year, there will be two months. So maybe one meeting will happen in five months, and another meeting will happen maybe in eight and nine months <laughs> with the board, yes. And in that meeting, you will explain what you have completed, and you will, you will be, you explain uh, if you feel some deficiencies in certain things or you need some help. You can ask the teacher, and the teacher should they be able to help you out, okay, uh, maybe in this section, I saw your child is really good in English, science, and language arts, but he's not really good in maths. Maybe put a more focus on these things, and they will tell you some resources to, conti to continue to work on. So that's how these two meetings will happen, and by the end, they will just give you a report. Uh, and that's it. Okay, uh, this is an excellent question. You can you can choose even, let's say your daughter is in grade two. She's really good in science. You can actually choose a science book of a grade three. And you tell them, I will teach this. They'll be okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll see the rest of the questions, inshallah, at the end of this, uh, this session. So let, let me show you a, a real life example of uh, that homeschooling is working. So I can ask Hafsa to come. How old are you, Hafsa? How old are you? Eleven. Okay. How many Jews do you memorize, Hafsa? Come here. She's my daughter. 
about 22. 22, okay. And uh, hadith? Um, all of it. Uh, 42 and an awiyah hadith. Okay, mashallah. And what uh, what else do you memorize? Do you memorize mutun? Yeah, I memorized mitna al jazariya. Okay, can you uh, can you uh, uh, recite some Quran for us and then hadith? Uh, yeah. Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الحديث الثاني مراتب الدين الإسلام والإيمان والإحسان عن عمر رضي الله عنه أيضا قال بينما نحن عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فخذيه وقال يا محمد أخبرني عن الإسلام فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الإسلام أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطعت إليه سبيلا قال صدقت فعجبنا له يسأله ويصدقه قال فأخبرني عن الإيمان قال أن, ت... قال أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر وتؤمن, وتؤمن بالقدر خيره وشده قال صدقت قال فأخبرني عن الإحسان قال أن, تعبد الله أك... قال أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك قال فأخبرني عن الساعة قال ما المسؤول عنها بأعلم من السائل قال فأخبرني عن أمارتها قال أن تلد الأمة ربتها وأن ترى الحفاة العراة العالة رعاء الشاء يتطاولون في البنيان ثم انطلق فلبثت مليا ثم قال يا عمر أتدري من السائل قلت الله ورسوله, الله ورسوله أعلم قال فإنه جبريل أتاكم يعلمكم دينكم رواه مسلم باب التجويد والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم 
من لم يصحح القرآن آثم لأنه به الإله أنزل وهكذا منه إلينا وصل وهو أيضا حلية التلاوة وزينة الأداء والقراءة وهو إعطاء الحروف حقها من كل صفة ومستحقها ورد كل واحد لأصله واللفظ في نظيره كمثله مكملا من غير ما تكلف باللطف في النطق بلا تعسف وليس بينه وبين تركه إلا رياضة امرئ بفكه So Hafsa, she was born here in Canada. So this is, uh, if you want to raise your kids with homeschooling, this could be an example. Uh, she was born in London, Ontario. She did not leave Canada, so she stayed here. She does not know Arabic that much, by the way. So, uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so grade five, uh, going to grade six, inshallah. She never, uh, she never uh, went to to uh, to public school, so homeschooling. Yeah, a lot of examples, a lot of kids. Alhamdulillah, uh, we started uh, two years ago uh, in Al Hafal Academy uh, in Al Rashid. Uh, they started with nine students, and now, mashallah, there are forty students, and I think this year there are more. So, Subhanallah. And most of the kids, <coughs> they, they, they are born here. Uh, I have my brother in Qatar. Uh, he, uh, so he was kind of shocked when he hear uh, this, this type of uh, education here. Uh, they don't have it in Qatar. Muslim country, mashallah, and right? They can't find such an opportunity. So homeschooling is a very good opportunity for us as parents. Um, yeah. Jazakumullah khairan. So, <coughs> okay, so we will, uh, yeah, I will talk for that. Okay, so we will we will take the questions from Sister Tasha when we come to the question and answer uh, sessions. But let me talk about this for like two minutes, inshallah, our structure. Uh, so how the program uh, looks like uh, in, in As-Siddiq. Uh, we have uh, two um types here, to, uh, the Islamic studies, which will I will show in, in detail, bismillah, and then uh, the academics, uh, the assistance for the, uh, for the academic uh, study, inshallah. So here is the full schedule. So we start with adhkar in the morning, bismillah, every day, adhkar for 15 minutes, and then Quran memorization, so the Sheikh is going to take care of uh, uh, the whole program until 12, 12.30, 12.30 inshallah. Uh, we have breaks as well, as you can see. And our focus here is on Tafsir Juz Amma. Okay, the meaning of uh, all these words in Juz Amma. Uh, the first semester, inshallah, uh, the first term, uh, which is three months, the focus will be until Surah Al-Zalzala. And then we continue, inshallah, to finish uh, Juz Amma. Uh, and also the hadith, 40 hadith, so the first term will be 15 hadith, a hadith per week, almost, hadith. So between 10 to 15 hadith, inshallah, uh, per term. Term is three months. And then uh, we have the uh, revision of the Quran as well. So we dedicated 60 minutes for that. And then the academic support. Uh, of course, the students will come with the curriculum from uh, the board they, uh, they registered in. Uh, we have uh, also Al-Lugha uh, Al-Arabiyya. So the focus, Sheikh will, will start talking with the kids in Arabic. They will train the kids, uh, he will train the kids for the next three months, uh, and then he will start talking with them. He, he will talk in this, this term as well in Arabic, 
will not change it into English, but academics, of course, it's, uh, it's in English, right? So that's Arabic language. And then uh, the Sira we have here as well. So uh, basically, uh, four fields here, the uh, Hadith, uh, Sira, in Arabic, and of course, uh, the Quran. And in Quran, the Aqeedah comes as well. Uh, we chose Juz Amma because it's full of Aqeedah. Okay, so next slide. So we accept for this term, inshallah, from grade one to grade four. Uh, and the fee will be $300 per month per child. Uh, a monthly uh, report will be sent to uh, the parents, uh, the assessment report. Uh, there will be continued development of the curriculum, of course, and the teachers as well. We have a plan for that. Okay, um, and there are some activities as well, uh, monthly trips and electronic gaming day. We will provide a free uh, tablet for the students who, who, uh, who are uh, going to join, inshallah. Next. Okay, how to register? Um, if you go to our website, you will find this poster there. And under this poster, you will have a registration form. You just click on this registration form. It's a Google form. You just write down your, your kid's name, your name, and the contact information, and that's it. So that's the registration in as -Siddiq. And, of course, you have to register in a board. I think the deadline, one of the boards we mentioned, the four boards, uh, you can choose another board. It doesn't matter. Uh, any board here in Alberta. It could be in Calgary, uh, Red Deer, right? You don't have to choose bo a board here in Edmonton. Uh, so you have to, and the deadline, uh, yes, it's September 30th to register uh, for the boards or on in these boards. Yes, end of September, September 30th. So now, time for the questions. So Sister Natasha, who is the director of the Blue, Tasha, uh, sorry, uh, she is the director of uh, the Bloom uh, Board, the homeschooling board. Uh, she is here with us. I don't know if she she is hearing us now. Okay, nice. Salam alaikum, Sister. So uh, if we have questions, inshallah, bear with us. Uh, start talking about bloom uh, for a bit and then if uh, you guys have a question then inshallah she'll uh, she'll answer and I help my students with that. And the only requirement is what we call a home education plan. And 
actually this year we have that as a Google form. So it's super simple. It's all multiple choice. The only thing you need to fill in is the materials. Um, and then there's two progress meets. So there's a mid-year progress meet and then an end of the year progress meet. And really that's not to assess your child. That's just to sit down, connect with you, uh, see how everything's going, see if you need any help. It typically doesn't take very long, like roughly half an hour per child. Um, and so I upload all of this information into the Bloom Google Classroom so you can stay up to date with events or extracurricular activities that are happening with Bloom or with EIA. I should also note that if you register with us, you have access to the EIA, Edmonton Islamic Academy Library, um, and also uh, quite a few of their events. So they have the Hadith competition, uh, Quran competitions, Arabic spelling bee, they have quite a few events. Um, so I po post all of that in the Bloom Google Classroom to keep everyone up to date. Um, and you also receive $850 in funding, and that's to help um, with your expenses for all the home education resources that you would be purchasing. Um, and the way we're structuring that this year is we're going to have two payouts. So basically, if you spend all your money by November 1st, you will get one check and you'll be paid out your $850. Um, if you only spend 50%, you would get 50% November 1st, and then the second one would be like roughly around May 1st. Um, and then, of course, you don't have to follow Alberta outcomes. You could also follow the home education outcomes, which are basically 22 very general outcomes that need to be covered over 12 years of schooling. So home learners typically try to follow the, the home education outcomes, and then sometimes they'll meet some of the Alberta outcomes. Um, but if you do decide to stay Alberta aligned, we have access to the, the textbooks through the library. And then I also have access to something called um, Alberta LearnNet, uh, sorry, Alberta Learning, and they, those are called the T4T modules, and those align actually with those textbooks. So, um, but if you decide to choose your own resources, there's so many homeschooling stores. I mean, I, I have six kids, I've homeschooled all of my children, um, and my eldest is now in high school, so I'm familiar with all grades. I've probably used all programs. Um, so I kind of know the advantages and disadvantages to all the programs. Um, and I mean, if your child is like a hands-on learner, I kind of know what programs cater to that. Uh, and then I guess you would be bringing these programs to uh, your program there and the teachers uh, can also help you out. Um, I think that's about it. I don't know. Do you, is there any questions about Bloom? <laughs> Again, please check, out, please check out Edmonton Islamic Academy's website. We do have... Um, also a Facebook page, it's called Bloom Home Education. Um, I'm also the admin of the Alberta Muslim Homeschoolers on Facebook, so you can contact me through there. Um, and if you are interested in registering with Bloom, you can just go to the EIA website and go to uh, admissions, and then scroll down to the very bottom, and there's a section there for Bloom Home Education. But definitely if you go to our website, you can find a PowerPoint that goes more into detail, and I can show you, like I'll show you everything that, uh, that we do and and what events we have and all of that so so uh let me uh, give the mic to uh, one of the uh, parents who has experience with bloom she's my wife actually so she's gonna talk about bloom for the last uh, year okay assalamu alaikum everyone um yeah, I did. Um, we we were, uh, so like my husband said, that we've been homeschooling our kids for about five years, five to six years. They've never been part of any um, uh, public schools, so they've always been homeschooled. And I know it sounds very daunting and it's scary. Um, it was very scary for us in the beginning because we, when you think of homeschool, you think that you have to stop your whole life you have to stop, um, like if you're working, you have to stop working. You have to always be home. Anybody who knows us as a family, we were never home. We were never home. We were always, when the pandemic hit, that's when we started be becoming uh, more at home. Uh, but before the pandemic, there, were, um, there was a slide here that we put here that talks about um, when we first started, there was not many uh, Muslim homeschoolers. 
there was a lot of non-Muslim homeschoolers. When you sit down, and the confidence that I got or we got as a family was through the non-Muslim homeschoolers. You would sit down with them and you would get ideas from them and you see the confidence in their kids, you see the confidence in themselves and they, when your kids go to school, they spend eight hours and when they come home, they come with um, uh, things that you're like, I, I, d I don't want you to, un to learn about this. I don't want you to learn about, you know, uh, Halloween or Christmas or Valentine's. And, and w our family, my own family, my side, we were raised in the school system. Um, I, went to, I went to an English system um, back home. When I came here, I also went to the public school, and we hated it. We hated the peer pressure. We hated everything that was not us. Um, even being in a um, Muslims, Muslim country, there was parties, there was dances, there was, you know, like relationships with the opposite gender. And when you, when you as a person, no matter how much your, your kid's iman is or your iman is, it's gonna go down because everyone else is doing it. You feel like the other. Um, so when when we had our children, we decided that's something that we don't want our kids to go through. Okay, so we started with one of the school boards. It's called Wisdom. It's a Catholic-based, uh, Christian-based uh, board that we started with them. Um, so I know they say that your the last day to register with a board is September 29th. That's if you want to be able to get the funding. So let's say you decide that within five months, your kids goes to public school. Within five months, you don't want the kids to be, your child to be in a, in a school anymore, in a public school anymore. You can take them out, notify your school that you're homeschooling them, and you can, if the boards have space, they can take you. So first contact the board and tell them that you want to know. That's what we did with Hafsa, in the beginning I didn't know about boards, so I d I, she wasn't part of any board. So we could have gotten in trouble if, not, if we didn't register with any board. So I just looked for any board that would accept us, and it was wisdom. Even though it was, and it was parent directed, so they didn't, they didn't have classes for us, which was great for us, because we were focused mostly on Quran, um, on them to learn how to read the Quran, and because the, your kids are gonna be young, they don't really need to be rocket scientists. They don't need to know like the chemistry of something, right? Because up to grade five or six, you should be okay to put them in, like not to focus too much on the, uh, on the academics part. You can focus on the things that you would love your child to have, the character, the Islamic character, the Quran, the Hadith, right? And know, having the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the, when I did my uh, home education program uh, plan, I wrote on my um, goal, as a goal to the Catholic uh, uh, system, or the Catholic board, that I, or the Christian-based uh, board, that I want to instill the love of God and the love of the prophet. They had no, they, they didn't reject it, they didn't refuse it, and every time our facilitator would talk to us, he would say, how is Quran going? How much have they learned? How are they, are they obedient to you? Are they listening to you? So their focus is mostly on their character, not as much on the academics. So that's one thing. So when, w um, Bloom, yes. So, so with Bloom, when, so Bloom started last year and there was a huge, um, ask from the Muslim board, Muslim homeschoolers to have something like this. Um, so when Tasha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward her, she's so busy, she lives in a farm, she has a farm, she has, mashallah, six kids. Um, she took it upon herself to start this. So when we found out about it, we registered with her and she is amazing, mashallah. And it's so nice to talk to someone that is on the same page as you, that understands that, you know, if you tell someone, my, my daughter did 20 Jews, nobody understands except if it's a Muslim person. So Tasha, when we tell her, you know, this is how many ajzat she's learned, she, she, she understands. If you have, 
if you want to unschool, if you want to school, if you want any kind of resources, she'll be able to give you. She'll send you right away. Like if you email her, she sends you links to everything, like right away. She will help you with understanding if there's issues with any programs that you're trying to do. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's with Bloom. And it's, it's amazing because it's an Islamic-based board. Just one more thing. I know, I know that you feel that your children will be alone. They won't have any social life. That's not true. Because Bloom is also planning on having field trips. Not only that, there's other homeschooling, there's other homeschooling families. I'm sorry, I'm so passionate about it, and I know I'm taking a lot of time. But there's other homeschooling communities and families, non-Muslim, that provides programs. So my kids, for the past three years, they were part of a gym class that they would go to. And you pay out of pocket, but they go for an hour and they do all kinds of gym classes. So they do four weeks for soccer, four weeks basketball. So that's that was made or done by a non-Muslim mother in a place. So you go and you take your kids. So that's about it. for sharing this. Yeah. So my students, I recognize like Sira and learning about prophets under social, because for me, that qualifies as history. With another board, they're not going to recognize that. So I know your focus is on Quran, and so you might not have as much time for social studies, but if you come to, to me and you tell me, you know, we're doing Sira, we're learning about various prophets, I'm like, okay, great. You know, sometimes parents come to me and they said, I, my kid wants to learn more about Islamic history. So we start talking about Ottoman Empire and how you can kind of incorporate that, what kind of books you can use. With another facilitator with a different board, they won't recognize that. In fact, one time I told one of my facilitators we were learning about the Ottoman Empire, and she said, what the heck is that? And I'm like, what? <laughs> you don't know anything about history? But, um, yeah, so that's also something that I can relate to. So please keep that in mind as well. Okay, Jazakallah khairan. It's not just the Islamic studies. You can just focus on the academic as well, right? Some kids, they are good in math, so you can focus on the math, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I know, like, I'm very well aware of all those programs. Like, there's a more advanced math program. There's a more hands-on uh, program. There's uh, a program that uh, parents are basically hands-off. So I can also steer you in the right direction. Um, depending on your child's needs. Okay, uh, any questions? Yeah, there is a question from a brother, uh, if you don't mind to come here. Jazakallah khair. So my question is, how do assessments take place in that case? The assessment, Sister Tasha, have you heard the question? Sorry, I didn't hear. How the assessment takes uh, takes place in, in homeschooling? Yeah, in a parent-directed homeschool program, it is up to the parents. So often in these kind of box programs, they contain assessments, for example, quizzes and final tests, and it's up to the parent whether or not they want to use those. But when you're filling out your home education plan, assessment looks very different. It could be um, verbal assessment, it could be just simply questioning your child, discussing. So assessment's not always in the form of tests. Um, and then, of course, we do that check-in, like the progress meets where we're discussing, and I kind of make notes, and I send you a report. So that report goes back to Alberta Education, and it's basically what we talked about. There's nothing, you know, nothing on there that's going to surprise you, and you can also change it. If there's something in there that you don't like, I can modify that. Um, but your child would progress to the next grade. So there's no year of year end assessment. And then also, if they have any interest in writing PAT exams, um, they can do those at EIA. But they're not mandatory. So quite a few uh, students, especially parent-directed students, they opt out. But that would be up to you whether or not you want your student to write those. So for grade 6 and grade 9. Okay, another uh, question, maybe last question, and then we or two more questions. Yeah. Yeah, sister, okay. So three questions, inshallah, and we will end our program. Bismillah. Okay, two of them. So following on uh, uh, Brother Amgad's uh, question, 
So if the assessment is basically the responsibility of the parent, how can this um, facilitate the, the move to the next grade? So let's say, like I, I realized that my kid is not gonna go in the, uh, is, is not like the homeschooling is not good for my kid and decided that I will go for the public school maybe or an Islamic school. And then my grades, the kids, the, uh, the, the grades that my kid got has to be transferable somehow or uh, it has to mean something for them to take him into the next, uh, uh, next uh, level. Now this is one question. The other question, I'm gonna ask a couple questions. Um, do you think that homeschool? Okay. Allahumma salli alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In my mind, I think that, um, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that homeschooling is not good for everybody. So, if uh, for an active kid, he doesn't, he doesn't stand, like he can sit down for some time. Asking him to sit down, a couple hours in front of the computer can be challenging. I think the homeschooling part is not gonna, the homeschooling system is not gonna work for him. So for that kind of, ki of kids, uh, those kind of kids, if, if they work in a group or they are doing homework like everybody else is doing the homework, this can be easier for them. So do you think that the homeschooling can be good for everybody and can be good for every parent too? Because not all parents can be teachers. Like teaching needs some, uh, qualities and characteristics in, in, in the teacher that might not be available for all parents. Third thing, I'm gonna <laughs> ask one more question then I'm gonna have my seat again. Um, the, the, the brother he said that we can cr uh, c uh, select a program. Now there are some public schools with specified programs like academic challenging programs and cogito programs and French programs and, and, one and, and what not. Is this available in uh, in the homeschooling? And would my kid with uh, um, uh, like a grade 12 degree, if he is moving to a un the university, because at the, at the end, the school is to prepare them for the university and then for the life. Uh, is there any problem for the university to ac acknowledge or recognize their grades from a homeschool? Yeah. Yeah. So the first question was a bit muffled, so I, I didn't quite catch the first part. I just heard something about um, if you weren't happy with homeschooling and switching out, is that yeah, what you heard? The tra transition between the two, public and in, in, in the, uh, the homeschool and the university. So first, first and last question is the same. By September 29th. So when you register, you fill out something called a notification form and you're notifying the gov government that you plan to home educate for the upcoming school year. So it's kind of a legal contract. And then after that deadline, your funding is secured with that board. So you wouldn't be able to be changing around. So most uh, families, once they're with the board, after September 9th, they're staying with that board. So I don't know if that answers the question because I didn't hear everything, but does that help? So the other way around, coming from the public school to, uh, to homeschooling and going from the homeschooling to the uh, public school, uh, is there any issue? Uh, as far as I know, if you go to your neighborhood school, they register your kids uh, right away. They have to register your kids they, uh, based on their age, right? That's what, what I know, Sister Tasha, so if you can elaborate on this. Um, I can definitely address his second question, though. I mean, I think actually a lot of people homeschool because their children do have attention issues. So in fact, it's difficult for their child to focus in a classroom where they're expected to sit most of the day. And when they're in a homeschool environment, you can cater that environment to your child. So if your child can only sit for an hour or half an hour, then you can work with that. You have them work for a bit, take a break, come back, you know, work on something else, do a little bit of hands-on, get them to stand up, do some jumping jacks. You can change their environment, but in a school setting, you can't. So a lot of parents end up homeschooling because their child does have that issue and it's easier to homeschool. So Brother Horm wants to add something here. Uh, I just would like to add one thing. Uh, since your child is gonna come here, right? And that's why you're doing the homeschooling, okay? So if he's coming here throughout the entire day from, he showed you the schedule, okay? Mm. So he's not, mm. technically mm. for him, it's a, it's a school, mm. right? He's not in the home 
I mean, if it's active or not, the issues that you're mentioning, okay? The first question that you have asked that, okay, how the grades will be your, if a parent is doing an assessment, how it's oh going no. to be transferable to the next, uh, to if he goes to the public school, okay? As a brother mentioned, uh, the technically, if you go to your, in your area to the public school, they are obliged to give you an admission for your child, okay? They can't oh. deny it, okay? Oh so no. you have the assessment and the teacher approves it, the teacher, uh, the parents, uh, whatever the s board that you register with, the teacher approves it. You take that assessment with them, and that's it. So it's not okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, keep in mind uh, for this particular program, I think we're just looking for grade one to four. Okay. But if you want to talk about the high school, uh, homeschooling kids who are going to the high school, this is a little bit more complicated and challenging, okay? Uh, uh, and I know some students who have been homeschooled gra until grade 12, went to the university, and they became physicians, okay? So it's not that, I it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not doable, it, it is doable, but it has, a, it has much more complexity, and probably maybe, maybe Ms. Tasha can be explain it more. Uh, any other question? That's it? Yeah. Yeah, another question. Uh, uh, so, Sister Natasha, you want to say something? You want to add to this? No? Okay. to high school but there are options for parent directed my son is in high schools doing a parent directed program and he is getting credits for a high school diploma so there's definitely options out there if i have students when they're in about grade eight or grade nine i do a um, a, a meeting with a, like a powerpoint meeting to present some of the options for high school uh, a question from uh, sister so I actually have two questions. Uh, the first one is, in the parent-directed learning, um, you said that you still have access to curriculums if you wanted it, right? So it doesn't have to be like you have to come up with everything. So you could have access to a curriculum and worksheets and whatever to help you teach the subject to your child. And then the second one is actually, um, Angela, I'll try to talk to you later as well. But again, there is that concern about social interaction. So could you expand on like what you do offer for social activities for children? So Sister Tasha, did you hear the questions? So the the first question uh, was about the resources. So uh, if the resources, all resources are available online from the board, so uh, the parents don't have to go through searching for the resources. Yeah. Is it? Mm. They can technically choose the resources they want, but I do help guide them with that. So I actually have my own personal website that offers um, some of the more popular resources. And then I also upload a spreadsheet in our Bloom Google Classroom that kind of goes over the more popular programs and links them. But I definitely can sit down, like I usually do sit down with, um, especially my new parents, and provide some guidance. But you're typically buying a box program or, you know, especially students who are, who are memorizing Quran, they're focusing on math, they're focusing on language arts, and they might not be doing a whole lot for science and social. So the focus is more on the other two subjects. For science, they might be using something like mystery science where they they have access to a website where they're watching like science videos and it poses you know some general questions. But um, we do have quite a few homeschool stores throughout Canada where a lot of homeschoolers are pur purchasing their material, but also Amazon has quite of those resources as well. Um, but definitely like that's something I usually sit and talk to my parents about in August and September. Okay, and, and the second question was about the social aspect of uh, 
a, if you have activities in the board for the kids so they can socialize, right? Yeah, that was the question. I don't, know, I don't know how that would work with, um, like, if they're attending your program, because what are the times of your program? Like, uh, th they, might they might coincide a little bit, but we definitely have um, options through Bloom as well as through EIA. So through Bloom, we had, um, we had a, a girls' book club, we had Ramadan prep class. We had a history class from an Islamic perspective. We had an Arabi calligraphy class. Uh, we have picnics. Um, that's just to name a few. We uh, Every month I do a virtual farm field trip. So my kids present a new aspect of farm life and it's kind of uh, interactive. So students can ask questions. So one month, you know, students chime into how to milk a cow and the next month, like learning about sheep, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then through EIA, we have the Sparks Run, we have the One, one Umrah Parade, uh, the Umrah Simulation, um, and they always have some ongoing um, virtual, like they had Hijab Day, for example, the Hadith competition, the um, Quran competition, the Arabic spelling bee. We have quite a few things that go on throughout the year. So definitely you have access to all of that, and it's optional. Also, uh, a monthly field trip is no. planned. Oh, okay, uh, a sister is asking if it's vir uh, only virtual, right? Uh, no, there's a combination of virtual and in person. Yeah. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Last question, uh, last two questions then. So, let, yeah, Brother Muhammad. Yeah. Right yeah, kids are waiting. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, sister Natasha. Uh, I have a couple of questions. One of them is, uh, I heard that like uh, kids can finish the, uh, uh, the high school like about uh, up to two, uh, two years earlier, they can access uh, university. Uh, how this can happen? Like, uh, uh, is it like the program can be finished by let's say March or April and they have access to the next level curriculum? That's my first question. Next one is since like once you you all you choose like the uh, homeschooling, I don't think you can go back uh, like halfway. Is oh I, I have to take my kids back to school. What if like in did, did you have in the past like some kids uh, that uh, didn't like the homeschooling then the the law go back to the interaction with the kids? So please, uh, if you can elaborate on this, thank you. Yes, sister, did you? So the the first question, <laughs> uh, I forget. Uh, yeah, earlier. So two, uh, yeah. So k uh, so I is it possible for the kids to finish the program two uh, two e two years earlier than the uh, the kids who are in public school? That's what you mean, right? So uh, yeah. So I mean, technically, you can. So. What I find is homeschoolers usually move through the content a lot quicker because you are working usually one-on-one, -on -one, you're moving at your own pace, so if your child knows you know, some sort of uh, unit really well, they can kind of move forward, right? So whereas in school, they kind of have to stay with the classroom. However, if you want them actually changed or adjusted in the system, we have to get that approved by the principal. And Alberta Ed only likes usually one grade, like a one grade up, not two grades. Um, I don't know if they've ever really approved two grades. I actually tried to do it with one of my sons and um, their board wouldn't allow it. They said one grade only, <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah, so how do you deal with the kids who, uh, who are half away, right, from uh, in, in homeschooling and they want to change? to the public school. Is it, is it possible to, uh, to do that, such, such a thing? To be honest, it's something I haven't come across yet. Um, so if they wanted to leave, I believe, yes, like you, you cannot switch boards, but if you wanted to go back into public school, I think there's an option, but I would have to find out exactly the process. So 
please contact me, like send me an email and I can, um, I can get back to you on that. So my email, by the way, is tasha.dawn at asylumseekers.ca. And as I said before, you can find it also on the website. Yeah, can you write it down in the chat, please? Said so Lafayette. Last question, last question, my brother. Go ahead. For the two meetings, are th can be th can those meetings be done virtually, or they have to to be in person? So, for the board meeting uh, with the students' parents, uh, should we do it virtually, or are they gonna do it virtually with them, or is it? Uh, they come to your house visiting? N yeah, actually it's all virtual. All virtual. Yeah. All virtual. And it's very flexible. I, I have a calendar, so I upload that, I send it to my parents, and then they can choose a slot that works well for them. If it's difficult, like the times that I have, I'm, I'm always flexible. Sometimes I do evenings with my parents, sometimes I do weekends. Okay, Jazakallah khairan, Sister Tasha. Uh, we will end the program. Jazakallah uh, khairan for the participation. May Allah accept from you. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhiru illa ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.